Do you love vintage linens and hand embroidered textiles, but you aren't sure what to do with them? Hi friend, I'm Rachel, creator of the blog and YouTube channel, Stone Cottage Home, where we cultivate the art of home from our heart with our hands. Today, I have 10 budget-friendly cottage-style DIY projects for you. Using vintage linens is one of the best ways to add that custom cottage look for that collected homey feel that we all love. In addition to all this DIY fun, I have a special treat for you today. We will be joined by the queen of DIY projects, Miss Sherry of Canterbury Cottage, and she will be sharing her vintage linen DIY projects. I'm excited to see what she has come up with and I encourage you to take a look yourself. Her channel will be linked below. Stick around to the end of the video where I'll share some great sources to find vintage materials that are ready for crafting or for purchase. Today, our projects are divided up into two categories. Five of them are in the no sew category and five will require a little sewing. For once, it wasn't the dishes that caught my eye at this antique store, but it was this hand block vintage wall hanging. This dull, gloomy corner of my laundry room needed a bit of life. I decided to add this vintage wall hanging as a backdrop and then layer in a vintage brass tray and a lamp all from the thrift store. As we work through these projects, I will move from easiest to a little bit more involved. This is obviously super easy. Keep an eye out for tablecloths, table runners, and even curtain panels to use as a layer in your home. This simple vintage linen touch for $5 has made such a difference in the laundry area. At the thrift store, I am looking through piles of bedding, hoping to find something I can use to bring life to my patio. Here is a stack of twin flat sheets, a dollar each. There are four of them all together. I love the pattern, I love the colors, and of course, I love the flowers. So I bet this is something we could use. My idea is to run a short curtain rod through the hemmed end, the top end of the twin sheet, gather it up and create two curtain corners on either end of our patio. This will help to blur the lines from the indoor outdoor living. Matt is giving me a hand here. He has a simple bracket that holds up either end of the curtain rod and just screws straight into the board if I want to wash the curtains, change them out for another color or style, or remove them for the winter, the end, the farthest end out, just simply slips off of the bracket and the curtain slides off. To tie back the curtains, I use two and a half inch burlap ribbon from Hobby Lobby. This one simple no sew DIY project cost about $20 and made a huge difference in our patio makeover last summer. If you would like to watch this transformation and all the DIY projects yourself, I will link the video for you below. For this third no sew DIY project, I've been saving this special chair. I spotted this antique Duncan Fife chair at the thrift store for $8. Actually a pair of them and I'll show you the other one once we're finished giving this one a makeover. On another day at a different thrift store, I found this needlepoint, complete needlepoint for less than $3. I love the roses. I love the little posies scattered on the background and it would be just perfect for recovering this seat. Funny thing is, I bought the needlepoint before I spotted the chairs. I didn't have any idea what I would do with it, but I knew it would come in handy. First thing to do is to remove this original seat cover 
which has four screws on the bottom. Once the screws were removed, I popped off the seat and decided to give the antique frame a moisturizing coating of Old English and allow that to soak in while recovering the seat. Sometimes it's these simple maintenance things, just taking care of the things you have that makes such a difference. Look at that shine. Now, I've never done a project like this before, but it seems pretty simple and straightforward to me. Spread out your fabric, center the design on the seat. Also paying attention to which side is up. You want the design to be facing you as you're looking at the chair. Oh look, <laughs> the needle is still attached. I also know I have quite a bit of extra fabric, which is good. Then it means I have a margin <laughs> in case I make a mistake. I start by folding under the top, pulling it smooth to make sure it's centered, then flipping it over holding it fairly tight and then I'll start by stapling that side in place. This will give me a point of reference and from there I can pull the other side tight. Double checking before I put in that second row of staples is always a good idea. Once I have the parallel rows of staples in, it is time to trim off some of the excess fabric. Do you ever wonder when making projects like this, who it was that sat for so many hours and did such beautiful work? What were they like? What did they intend the project for? And what would they think of the new life you have given their project? Once I have two parallel sides anchored with staples, it is time to trim down the other fabric and start figuring out how to fold the corners. The fabric does get rather thick and bulky, so I try to spread the corners as widely as possible. Recheck the front to make sure we're centered and then finish up this last side, again pulling it as tight as I can so we don't have any wrinkles or loose, saggy upholstery on the front. The corners were a bit tricky, so I put in extra staples for good measure. It's so beautiful! The extra layers made for a snug fit, but I got it into place and just love how this needlepoint complements the dark wood on this antique chair. If you count polishing the chair with the Old English, I think this project took about 30 minutes in total and cost $11. This pair of Duncan Fife antique chairs, $8 each from the thrift store, have come in so handy. They are similar in profile to our dining room chairs, which makes it great when we need extra seating. Other than that, one of them is my sewing chair and the other just sits around <laughs> looking pretty. This simple project features favorite vintage and antique linen stretched over a smooth shade. My guess is that fabric adhesive was used to apply the fabric, then the trim hot glued on top. In the same manner, you could use a silk scarf like this one with a border to apply to any one of your lamps. For this last no-sew project using vintage linens and fabrics, I want to share with you one of my favorite DIY projects, how to make an English pelmet. 
If you are unfamiliar with the English pelmet, think of it as a hard valance or cornice board that goes over the top of your drapes. I have been inspired by many an English pelmet in a kitchen, a dining room, and a bedroom. They are so fun to make and can be customized to any shape you like, very formal or cottage casual. After looking at several designs, I traced out this shape and Matt cut it out of boards and built it for me. The first step is to cover it with quilt batting to give it a little bit of cushion. Next is to repeat the process with the fabric you've chosen that either matches or complements the fabric of your drapes. For this project, I found three matching vintage drapes at my thrift store. Two became regular curtains, and the third, as you see here, I am cutting down to fit the pelmet. To fit your fabric around the curves and corners, simply cut the fabric to the shape that you have with a little extra, and then simply fold and pleat and staple in place. Remember that this is the back side, and though I do like to have it tidy, it's okay if it doesn't match perfectly. Here is the finished pelmet ready to be installed. A quick before shot of the two panels used as drapes in our guest bedroom and the after. The pelmet gives such a finished, stylized look that is so English country. All the materials needed to complete this project cost us about $40. For those of you who love to sew or who are interested in learning, here are five vintage linen DIY projects in order from easiest to a bit more involved. I am beginning with this vintage hand embroidered table topper. My goal is to turn it into some extended cafe curtains for our master bathroom. First, I cut it in half, then the two raw edges must be hemmed. To hem, you simply fold the edge under a quarter of an inch, twice, and press. Here I am folding it under the first time. This is actual linen, and with a steam iron, it holds the edge very crisply. With the edge pressed under twice, it is time to hem. This is simple. You just run a straight seam down the edge that is loose. Sewing can be very relaxing and is one of my favorite pastimes, as you can see from the quilt on the design board behind me. Once both sides are hemmed, it is time to turn over the top and make a rod pocket for the extension rod to slide into. This is easy in one sense, that it is already hemmed with these gorgeous blue scallops. In order not to detract from this lovely handiwork, I want to go slowly and follow the curve of each scallop as I tack down the side to create a pocket. And here you see, it looks absolutely gorgeous, giving it some filtered light and a bit more privacy. Remember the needlepoint from our previous project? Here's another option. You could find coordinating fabric and make gorgeous custom throw pillows to match your decor. If you only have a small amount of vintage fabric, making a quilted hot pad or oven mitt is a great way to use up favorite scraps. Here is one that I made. A quilted hot pad is straight, simple lines and only uses a small bit of fabric and it can be quilted on your home sewing machine. Another wonderfully fun project to get that custom cottage look is to cover an ottoman with a vintage slipcover. Here you see ticking on one side and the other vintage French grain sack with hand embroidery. Your design can be as simple or as complicated as you wish. A simple fitted cover or ruffles, pleats, and piping. Not only would this project take a minimal amount of fabric, but it would be washable. For our final project in repurposing vintage linens, let me share with you my favorite apron pattern. This pattern has made wonderful Christmas and birthday gifts 
and I've made it so many times. The pattern offers a full apron like this or a half apron, and I love that it comes with pockets. For the body of the apron, I chose a fabric that resembled a Pioneer calico, an accenting trim, and then I inserted into the top of the bib the vintage cross stitch that you see. I found this piece on eBay and loved the bright cheery strawberries. This used to be a dinner napkin, and as you can tell, I simply inserted it into the bib and sewed it down with the trim on both sides. This apron is well loved. As promised, here are some great sources for finding vintage linens. Whether you're wanting to make DIY projects yourself or purchase handmade items, there are the typical sources such as your local thrift and antique shops, or there are online shops. Shopping in person is great because you can handle the materials and get a sense of the condition and the colors, plus there's no shipping. Shopping online will yield greater variety, plus you can sort by the fabric or the style that's suited to your home. These results come from typing in bulk vintage linens on the Etsy platform. This listing is a collection of scrap linens that have been hand embroidered. You would have so many options from a mystery kit like this. Then here is an assorted pack of hand block napkins. They are from India and could be used for a myriad of projects. If farmhouse linens and burlaps are more to your liking, there are also listings for these and they come in all different bundles. This one here is a French vintage faded beautiful valance. Here is a happy rainbow collection of sheets that have been cut down to the same size squares. This would make such an easy, happy patchwork quilt. Here are a few specific shops on Etsy with vintage fabrics that you might enjoy for your home. Remember to pop over to Miss Sherry's channel, Canterbury Cottage, for more inspiration on repurposing vintage linens for your home, her link is in the description box below. Wasn't that fun? If you enjoyed today's visit and love making no-sew DIY projects in the English cottage style for your home, you might enjoy this tutorial on the no-sew English cottage pleated lampshade. Thank you so much for dropping by today and until next time, Take care.